Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my 15 tips for fighting acne. So the first step, you wanna use acne fighting ingredients such as benzoyl peroxide, sulfur, alpha hydroxy acids, retinoids, and glycolic acids. Some people are have really sensitive skin to benzoyl peroxide and salicylic, so sulfur is also really great and it's more gentle on the skin, so you wanna just keep trying to see what works for you. Everyone's skin is different, so what may work for your friend may not work for you. So you wanna just keep trying to see which is the best treatment for you. Step number two, don't sleep on your hands. A lot of people tend to sleep like this and you may have just touched the remote, you may have just put down your cell phone which has a lot of bacteria on it. So that's something that we tend not to think about when we go to sleep, we just put our hand on our face and that may have a lot of oils and bacteria. So try if you have to sleep with your hand, at least try to sleep like this. That's something to think about. Third step, you wanna stop touching your face, stop touching your pimples because you have a lot of bacteria on your hands and then you're trying to squeeze the pimples and you're putting more bacteria onto the face. So you wanna break out of that habit of touching your skin and picking at your pimples. Fourth step, you wanna change your pillowcase because your hair has a lot of products in it such as oils and pomades and a lot of ingredients that actually may aggravate your acne. So you want to change your pillowcase every few days and you can also just flip your pillow over and that helps keep the products off of your face. So you want to change your pillowcase every couple of days. Fifth step, you want to clean your cell phone. You'd be surprised where you're putting your phone in the shopping cart on the counter and the kitchen counter on the bathroom counter and that's picking up a lot of dirt a lot of bacteria and then you're putting it onto your face so you want to wipe down your cell phone with alcohol or you also want to use speakerphone but you don't want to put your cell phone right on your face because you notice a lot of breakouts get right here on your cheeks so clean your cell phone sixth step you want to eliminate dairy wheat fried foods and gluten from your diet, these are inflammatory foods and can aggravate acne and it can actually help improve your digestive system and it can actually help eczema as well and can help itchy scalp. You ever notice when you're going to sleep at night and your scalp feels like it's on fire, a lot of that is yeast, uh, overproduction of yeast. So it helps a lot if you can eliminate dairy, wheat, and gluten and sugar from your diet. You can even keep a food journal to see which foods are triggering your acne. Uh, for me, wheat is a really big thing. If I eat even just a small piece of bread, I, my eczema flares up here and then I tend to break out right here. So I've elimin eliminated all of the wheat uh, from my diet and it's helped my eczema uh, a lot. Refined sugars can also cause fungal acne. which is an overgrowth of yeast, which you can find in sugar cereals and cookies, donuts, uh, processed foods. So again, if you also have itchy scalp at night, it could be an overgrowth of yeast. It happens because fungus thrives on sugar. You might notice a decrease in irritation and itching in your scalp and skin if you can eliminate sugar. Fungi is basically swimming in your skin and multiplying with sugar intake. So that is something you definitely want to think about and that's why it feels like things may be crawling in your scalp and it's not lice, it's overgrowth of yeast. Refined sugars can cause a spike in your blood sugar and can exacerbate acne and breakouts. You don't have to go cold turkey, but again, it would be good if you can keep a food journal, then you can see what actually triggers. Some people can tolerate wheat and they don't have any problems with acne and eczema but some people can't tolerate the wheat. So it is a good thing if you can keep a food journal. You might even wanna to talk to your doctor about getting a food allergy test because there might be some ingredients that you actually are allergic to. So it might be beneficial for you to talk to your doctor about getting that allergy test. Seventh step, you wanna use a clean washcloth on your face. You don't wanna use your bath towel when you just get out of the shower.
that can have a lot of oils and bacteria and some people may use the same bath towel for two or three days. So you wanna use a clean washcloth. I like to keep a basket of washcloths on my sink so I don't have to keep going to the cabinet. So that helps a lot with keeping a fresh washcloth on your skin. So you wanna use a clean washcloth on your skin. Eighth step, you wanna keep your hair off your face. Your hair can have a lot of oils and pomades and hairspray, which can actually aggravate your acne and you can get a lot of those little tiny bumps around the jawline and even around your forehead too. So you wanna make sure you keep your hair off your face. Uh, maybe put it in a ponytail or you can put in a headband, but you don't want to cover your face with your hair because that can actually trigger your acne breakouts. Step nine, take your vitamins. Uh, you can take vitamin A, which is excellent. It's found in retinols, which is really great for your skin, but you don't want to take too much of vitamin A because it can cause hypervitaminosis A. which can cause damage to your liver and kidneys. And you always wanna check with your doctor before you're taking any vitamins or supplements. So that's always a good thing. Just check with your doctor before you start taking things. Take vitamin D. It helps boost your immunity and has antimicrobial properties, which stops fungus and bacteria. And studies have shown that some people who have acne are actually deficient in vitamin D. Take zinc, which is excellent for inflammatory acne those big nasty pustules that you get on your skin. It helps suppress the production of sebum, which means less oil and helps fight acne. Tenth step, try to stay out of the sun. The sun can increase inflammation and cause even more redness and irritation. It can also cause hyperpigmentation of those acne scars even worse. If you have to be in the sun, wear a mineral-based sunscreen and a hat. If you have irregular cycles, you have an excess of hair growth and weight gain, hair loss from the head and acne. You should talk to your doctor about getting tested for POCS. Which is caused by higher than normal levels of certain hormones that could be one of the causes of your acne. The last step, try not to stress. I know it's not easy when you have a face full of pimples and your skin is breaking out and you're feeling very isolated because you feel like everyone's staring at you with your skin, but try not to stress because stress can actually cause more breakouts. And when you are stressed out, it slows down the healing process for acne and breakouts. So you might wanna try doing some meditation or slow breathing exercises when you do start to get stressed out. I know that acne can make you feel really isolated and the thing is you are not alone. A lot of people suffer from this. 
I suffered from acne for years, all the way through high school, through my 20s. I was called pizza face. I had pock marks on my skin. I took every kind of medication. Uh, I did erythromycin, uh, tetracycline. I did every type of chemical pill. And it, I suffered a lot from acne, so I do know what you're going through. And I hope that some of these tips can actually help you out so you can start to clear up your skin and you can start to live the life that you want to so you're not thinking about your skin and your breakouts and feeling bad about yourself. And one thing to know is that you do not, you do not cause your acne, that there is nothing wrong with you, and it is not contagious. I know some people tend to think that acne is contagious or that your skin is dirty, but your skin is not dirty. So you don't want to keep washing it. And that's a misconception is that people tend to think that acne is actually dirty, but it's not. A lot of it can happen is if you are over washing your skin, but acne is not your fault. And sometimes it could be from genetics and it could just be from stress factors. It could be hereditary. It could be fungal acne. It could be POCS. So these are the kind of things that you want to think about with your acne and hopefully some of these tips can help you. And thanks for watching guys.